Hollywood is banking on digital technology to keep 3D in theaters. But not everyone is an instant fan. Some kids come in and say, you know, I never really didn't, didn't appreciate that, that it was a 3D movie. In his practice as a pediatric ophthalmologist, Dr. Rudolf Wagner gets a lot of 3D movie reviews from his young patients. How did it look to you all? And they'll say, well, it looked flat. It just looked like a regular movie. I mean, it was good, and the color was fine, and I could see, I understood the story, I could see the, the, what they were trying to show, but it just didn't look like anything special to me or different. Well, that's a red flag for me, because then I realized that there's probably something going on with their vision in one eye versus the other. Since the illusion of 3D on screen relies on nature's own ability to interpret depth by fusing the separate images we get from each of our eyes, the effect is limited for those who have problems with their binocular vision. If you don't have pretty much equal vision, equally good vision, in both eyes, you really don't get the, the full appreciation of having of, of depth perception, either naturally or, or with a, a movie like this. And that can be a sign then that they do have a, a problem with one of their eyes. It could be something as, as simple as an unequal refractive error, meaning that they, they're in focus perfectly with the right eye, let's say, but the left eye is very nearsighted or has a lot of astigmatism. Even some 3D directors had trouble seeing in 3D. But Raoul Walsh, who made a Western called Gun Fury, and Andre de Tau, who made House of Wax and The Stranger Wore a Gun. And both those directors had only one eye, so they couldn't view the finished results, believe it or not. Another complaint Dr. Wagner hears from patients, queasiness. They'll express it different ways, depending how young they are. Um, some will say I had a headache, some will say, you know, it, 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 I didn't like the, the jumping at me or the diff different things. And what I think is happening, and why some children might complain of this, or even adults, is that if you have had a history of having some type of strabismus or misalignment of your eyes, you may be working, as I was mentioning earlier, you may be working harder to see or to focus this image or fuse it than you would normally. And it, it does lead to some discomfort. But it's not only poor vision that leads to discomfort. Sometimes the movie itself just makes your eyes tired. The problem has to do with accommodation and virgins. Accommodation is the place where you focus your eyes, where your eyes are focusing. Vergence is the place where the two eyes are converging. In real life, when we look at an object, the muscles in our eyes work to converge on that object and the lenses adjust or accommodate to bring it into focus. The two occur at the same location. The problem with 3D technology today is that the image is almost always created on the screen and when we look at that immediately, our eyes will accommodate at the depth of the screen, but the virgins will be at a different location. If they present you with an image that's coming at you or closer to you, you're converging, but your lens is not accommodating properly, you're focusing at a farther point on the screen initially. In order for that to be comfortable, we need to decouple our accommodation and our virgins. It can give you a little sense of uneasiness. Some people even get a little even get a little seasick or nauseous from that type of effort. Unskilled 3D cinematographers can make this problem worse. This was a 3D effect that was in there to wow the audience. It was not a 3D effect that was meant to tell a better story. More on that next.